Good morning. Glad to have all your smiling faces in here. It's not raining. It's a beautiful day outside. It's a beautiful day in here. We're going to worship this morning. Let's stand. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but what? Have everlasting life. Let's sing it. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. 
for you today empty because we know apart from you there is nothing we can do we are dead father we ask you to fill us in this moment with your word and your spirit give us not only eyes to see your glory lord but ears to hear your word and a heart to simply take that word and obey it walk where you say walk speak what you tell us to speak let us take every thought, every word, every deed captive to you. May everything, Father, that flows from us be for your glory. Teach us how to do that this morning, Father, through your servant. We ask you that in your precious son's name. Amen. You may be seated. I want to introduce to you a great pastor. He is... Uh, the catalyst for this region of the Florida Baptist Convention, Pastor Jeffrey Singletary. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. He has a great word for us. Well, good morning, good morning. It is good to be in the house this morning. It's good to be with you. We're, I was excited and delighted to have been invited. And so... It's, it's good to be with the saints of God on this, uh, this weekend. Tomorrow, we celebrate Labor Day, uh, a day that we uh, have set aside to honor the labor force. And so this is Labor Day weekend, and so that means that uh, folks are traveling, and, and if you're from my neighborhood, that means you're going to be barbecuing. And so... Amen, amen, amen. Where I'm from, we say, that chicken died that I might live. <laughs> amen. I've, I've killed a few of them. But uh, it is good to be with you this morning and to Pastor Brown, to his bride and to his pride. It is, once again, just a joy to, to be uh, with you and with the great saints of First Baptist of Inverness. Been looking forward to be with you this morning. And so let me pray, and we will get into the heart of uh, our message and, and uh, about Labor Day. Let me pray. Father, God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you once again for the privilege to stand behind the sacred desk and to proclaim your uncompromising word of God. And so, Father, we ask, in the name of Jesus, and Father, that you would speak in us, to us, and through us. We pray, Father God, that, that you would give each one of us, Father, blood-dipped ears. Give us hearts, hearts that are open to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then, Father, when it's all said and done, God will be careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor that you so richly deserve. For Father, we ask all these things in Christ's precious name, and all God's people said, Amen and Amen. This morning, as we celebrate this weekend, Labor Day weekend, I want us just to look back and grapple, if you will, for a moment with Labor Day. Why? Why? Because our nation had a drift, drifted away from what God had created and instituted. Therefore, the nation created another day called Labor Day. It's called Labor Day. God had created a day of rest, <laughs> but because we deviated, because the nation drifted, we, we created another day. 
You see, during the 19th century, many people, including children, worked seven days a week. Now, you didn't hear what I just said. They worked seven days a week, and the work day was many times 12 hours long. Anybody ever worked 12 hour shifts? Hey, man, boy, that's quite a few hands. You know, that's no sipping tea now. Seven days a week, 12 hour days. Most Americans endured the harsh and unsafe working condition and environment just trying to eke out a living. Some work on farms, others in mines and, and factories. The task was often physically demanding, yet offered very, very little pay. In fact, in 1879 uh, in New York, a woman working as a dressmaker in a factory averaged between 33 cent to 58 cents per day. Per day. That's not hour. It's per day. Although only a small number of, of workers joined various labor unions, the ideal of organized labor was growing. Labor leaders in the late 1800s suggested a labor, a labor Day event to show the solidarity of labor unions and the support of the American workforce. On June 28, 1894, Congress passed an act making the first Monday in September of each year a national legal holiday, and President Grover signed it into law. And so, and so once again this morning, we asked the question, why? Why Labor Day? Because mankind could not get out of his own way. Mankind had repeatedly lost its way. When God created the earth and man, God created Labor Day. God created Labor Day. You said, really, preacher? Absolutely. Absolutely. A day of rest. A day of rest. He called it Sabbath rest. Sabbath rest. When God created earth and man, God had a plan. He understood the necessity for rest for both man and the land. Now, I know that's a novelty ideal. We get the fact that man needs to rest. We get the fact that man must rest. But did you know the land must rest? Now, those who were farmers, you understand that. Now, I grew up, I'm a country boy, and the land rests, but we didn't. <laughs> and so I understand rest and the need of rest. When I was a kid, we, we, we worked from, grandmama would say, from cake to cake, <laughs> sun up to sundown. That, that you would leave in the dark and you would come back in the dark. And so the, God knew, God knew the, that, that, that man, when he created man, that, that his desire was for holistic well-being of both man and the land. He understood the importance of rest, that rest would be for man and the land. He knew man would not, he knew that man would not understand and that Satan would exploit man's internal passion for working excessively to exceed in life. That desire to just always, always pushing the limits to have more, to achieve more, to want more, to need more. Therefore, God created and defined a work schedule, a work week.
everyone and everything in life needs downtime. Offline, shut down. We all must learn how to hit the off button. Now, now listen to me. I, I know that sounds simple. I know that sounds elementary. I know, but listen to me. People today struggle to hit the off button. And if you work from home, you know it's harder to hit it. And so, beloved, this morning, God knew that if you don't get away, you'll come apart. You'll come apart. Burnout, listen to me this morning, burnout occurs because you are wearing out. Burnout occurs when we violate God's will and our in, internal, internal clock and will. You are never at your best when you are tired. When you are tired, you get angry easy. Somebody ought to say amen. When you're tired, you, you speak before you think. You, you react impulsively. Listen to me this morning. You're unable to see the issues clearly and objectively. Therefore, God understood he would have to model it, command it, and demand it. Demand what? Rest. Oh. God knew that he would have to model it, command it, and demand for people to rest. To rest. Listen to me this morning. One would think that rest is natural and fundamental. It is, but it's not. Huh. Many of our health issues are due to us violating and denying our body need for rest. The Father always knows best. <laughs> the Father knew that we needed rest. And so he, he modeled it. He modeled it for us. Three things, four things I want us to see this morning from the context of our passage this morning. The first thing I want you to see is that this thing about Labor Day, that God, God instituted Labor Day. God says you need a day of rest. Huh. He modeled it. When God created the Sabbath rest, he was not tired, weary, or in need of rest. He was modeling for us. God knew the frailty and the propensity of man's heart. Therefore, he placed borders, a border in our lives. Listen to me this morning. Borders help us. Borders protect us from others and ourselves. When we live our lives without borders, we're all over the place and life becomes out of control. We no longer know when the week starts or when it ends. <laughs> When the day began and when the day ends. Notice the text this morning, Genesis chapter 2, verse 1. Genesis chapter 2, verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth was complete in all this vast array. By the, the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Yeah. God modeled. He wasn't tired. He wasn't weary. He wasn't exhausted. He was modeling for us that, that in the work, in the course of the work week, you need to unplug. You need to take the tension off the boat. Off the boat. You need a day of rest. Now listen to me. Listen to me. Rest doesn't mean doing something different this, that, that day. Rest means exactly what it means. It means to rest. 
You know, you know, it, it, it said, well, you know, we work six days at the office. We work six days at the factory. On the day, on the day of my day off, I'm going to work around the house. That's what my wife told me. I keep trying to tell her that's not what the Word of God said. The Word of God said, rest. <laughs> Say, rest when you get that done. Listen to me. He says, then God blessed the seventh day and made it what? See, the world has hijacked God's day. He said, on that day, on that seventh day, on that day that you rest, it's not for you to do stuff. He says, make, he says, while you rest, keep that day holy. Holy unto the Lord. Because on it he rests from all the work of creating that he had done. I want us to see six things real quickly, six things real quickly that God did. That the Sabbath rest was created for several reasons. The Sabbath rest was created for several reasons. First, the completion, completion. It indicates completion, <laughs> the Sabbath day. It indicates the completion of one week and the beginning of another. Listen a minute. Now, my, I worked in engineering. And, and, and in engineering, we, it was always feast or famine. Feast or famine. And so I remember years, years that we, would, we were working 70, 80 hour weeks. You didn't hear what I just said. And so we would, I would be at the office 7 in the morning, leave 7 at night. We would go in on, on Saturday, you know, just spend, and then sometimes even push Sunday. Because, listen to me, when you're working like a Hebrew slave, you don't know when the week starts or when the week ends. Lord said the Sabbath. Completion. You need a starting point and you need a stopping point. Not only does it, does it, it gives us, it indicates completion, the completion, but the conclusion, the conclusion. Work must have a conclusion. There must be an end to it. Listen to me this morning. I, I pastored in Tampa for 22 years. Listen to me. Pastors, pastors can be the greatest violators of the Sabbath rest. Why? Because we work on the Sabbath. And we preach on the Sabbath. And while you're resting, I hope you're resting right now. Don't go to sleep, no, but just rest. <laughs> it's like, it's like, like the preacher was preaching one day. He was preaching, and, and the preacher noticed he, noticed he noticed the deacon over the corner. He noticed the deacon, the deacon had, the, the, in the middle of the service, the deacon had went to sleep. Now, I know that doesn't happen here. But the deacon had went to sleep. And the preacher was preaching, but he was, a, he was a little annoyed by it. He was a little, he was a little moved by it. the deacon was sleeping while he was preaching so hard. And he looked over, he told the guy next to him, he said, hey, hey, wake him up. Wake him up. The guy said, you wake him up, you put him to sleep. <laughs> he says, rest. That we ought to rest. We need, we need conclusion. We, we need a conclusion. Listen to me. Like even, even, even when you're you pastoring, when you see pastoring, uh, shepherding can be a 24-7, 24 hours, seven days a week. Even when you are on vacation, you're still on. You're still on. Let something happen in the church. <laughs> They're going to call you. <laughs> My pastor, pastor on vacation. No, he worked. Hey, call, call, call pastor. And, and we call with an expectation that he's going to do what? Oh, he's going to pick up. <laughs> and so, pastors, listen to me. There's, there's a third thing. Third thing we see is not only that the, there's the completion, there's the conclusion, but there's the charging. The charging. The Sabbath rest was created for because the Sabbath rest, we need to recharge, to refuel, to replenish, to restore our body. You need, your body needs to be replenished, to be restored. But not only is it to recharge, but that the call, the call, the Sabbath was created for the call, the call to worship and sanctification that makes 
us holy. You are, there's a, the Sabbath was created because there's a call to worship. That's why you're here this morning. That's why we're here. Because part of the Sabbath is the call to worship and sanctification. But not only is there the call, there's the cause. Worship causes us to look upward and inward for cleansing. Cleansing. There's the completion, there's the conclusion, there's the charging, there's the calling, there's the cause, and then there's the command. The command. Look at the command. The command to rest. Why would you have to command someone to do something that comes natural? The command simply to rest. You know, I'm convinced today people today don't know how to rest. He says, for most, for some baby boomers, we need to define rest. For some millennials, we need to define work. <laughs> some of y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but not only did he, he modeled it, he commanded it. God knew and he understood that it was not enough just to model it, that he must command it. Therefore, the Sabbath rest is part of the Ten Commandments, not the Ten Suggestions. Look at the text. Exodus 20, verse 8 says, Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath, there it is, unto God. It's a Sabbath to the Lord, your God. Beloved, I'll never forget, some of y'all seen the movie Concussion? In the movie Concussion, they're talking about suing the NFL because of players having concussions. And they were talking with this one major attorney. And they were having this debate about suing the NFL. And, and, and this attorney, he said something, he said something that, that rocked my world. He said, you're going to sue who? You're going to sue the NFL? He said, don't you know the NFL is one of the most powerful organizations, the most powerful league? And do you know the NFL owns a day that God used to own? Sunday used to be the Lord's Day. Now it's NFL, NBA. The devil has stolen what belonged to the Lord. People can't even enjoy the service because they keep looking at, you know, game, game starts in about. <laughs> got to get out, got to preach it, preach it, preach it, preach it. Cut, cut, cut that short now, come on. He says, the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God, and on it you shall do, you shall not do any work. Neither you, watch the text, or your sons or your daughters, nor your male or female servants, nor your animals, nor your any foreigner residing in your town. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea and all that is in it, in them, but rest on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Isn't it interesting? I get it that man needs to rest. I get it that people need to rest. But God said don't even work the animals. Don't even work. Don't even turn the tractor on. Let everything rest. Rest. Listen to me this morning. Translated, God is saying, there is no one as busier than I was, or that I am, yet I stop to rest. Rest and worship are commandments, not suggestion. Pentecost Sunday became the church new Sabbath. 
Uh, when God moved, uh, the transition, the ecclesial transition took place when we moved from Saturday to Sunday, from the temple to the church, from the priest to the preacher. God moved. And so at Pentecost, no longer on Saturday, now Sunday. Sunday is our day of rest. Once the American culture honored the Lord's day as Sunday, a day of rest and a day of worship. I remember when I was a little boy, back when Moby Dick was a mental. Some of y'all will get that later, don't worry about it. But Sunday was all day church. <laughs> you went to Sunday school, you went to you stayed for church, grandma and them, they, they bought potluck, <laughs> and, and, and you ate at the church. Because that, that afternoon you had you had Bible training, BTU, you wasn't going home now. They didn't care about football, basketball, or baseball. And then Sunday night, Lord have mercy, we had church. And then Monday you went to work. Sunday used to belong to the Lord. I mean, you know that ain't true anymore. Yeah. yeah. The day is how can we cut it short? How short can we cut the service? 60 minutes or less, and less is better. <laughs> what happened to the day? Being the Lord. Where, where are you rushing off to? Where, where, what is so important that you got God on the clock? They say people only watch their clock in two places, at work and at church. You ever see people at the game? You ever see people at the game watching the clock? If the game goes in overtime, praise the Lord. <laughs> Everybody wasn't worrying about Brady. Is Brady coming back? No, Jesus coming back. <laughs> Listen to me. He modeled it. Worship. Listen to me. As our nation became more pagan, the culture lost its ability to rest, and the church lost its appetite for worship. God modeled it, he commanded it, and then he demanded it. He demanded it. God, what God required man to do for his own well-being, listen to me, holistically, mankind uh, total well-being for man's well-being man body soul and spirit needs rest needs rest the land need needed rest God told the children of Israel to plant and harvest for six years let the land rest on the seventh year he called the seventh year sabbatical a sabbatical year in God's earthly economy, the second pattern of seven, which is called the sabbatical cycle, the third sabbatical, the third pattern of seven, the seven sabbaticals, this brings us, uh, brought God's people to the year of Jubilee. Seven, seven, brought us to the year of Jubilee. Listen, I believe God has a, there's a pattern every seven days you rest. Every seven years, you rest. Let the land rest. Every seven times seven years, you rest. You restore that which is taken back from you. It's a year of jubilee. And then there's another seven. I tell preachers, I believe every seven years, a preacher needs a sabbatical. Every seven years, I believe the preacher needs a sabbatical to get away. Not just for a week. You know, when you, when you take off what we used to, you're working on next week's sermon already. He needs that 30 days, that monthly sabbatical to get away every seven years. Listen to me. He says the fourth week, the fourth pattern of seven was 7,000 years. For most, for almost 6,000 years, the earth 
has been corrupted by sin. After 6,000 years, the earth will have a sabbatical rest for a thousand year, which is called the millennial rest, the time when Christ will rule his earthly reign on earth. 7,000 years. Seven is that seven, every seven days rest. Every seven years, you rest, let the land rest. Every seven, south seven years, you let everything rest and you restore all dead. God has a system. God has a system that for our best. Listen to me. The children of Israel were not faithful to God for 490 years. They refused to allow the land to rest during the sabbatical, the sabbatical years. And because of their disobedience, God allowed Israel to be taken captive by the, the Babylonians. They were taken captive by the Babylonians. For 70 years, they were in captivity while the land rest for 70 years. God will get his way. God is like the FBI. He always get his man. The land enjoyed the sabbatical rest all the days of desolation. According to Leviticus chapter uh, 26 says this, and then the land will enjoy its Sabbath all the days of desolation while you're, you're in your enemy's land. Then the land will rest and enjoy its sabbatical. All the days of the des its desolation will be observed, the rest which it did not observe on your, sabbat on your Sabbath while you were living in it. The question today, the question, why did Israel nation as a nation and his kings refuse to obey God's Sabbath rest? Was it purely economics? Was it that they were greedy for money? Prosperity? What was it? Let me suggest a couple things. Perhaps they thought that it was not economic, economical to let the land rest for a period of a year. Uh, they would miss a harvest season. Perhaps they concluded that they would suffer financially or materially. Their failure to obey cost both them and the land to suffer. Here's an interesting passage that you quote a lot, that we all quote a lot. Second Chronicle chapter 7, verse 14. Notice what it says. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and do what? Did you catch that? God connects the, the soul with the soil. God connects the soul with the soil. God says the land is not producing, the land is suffering because the souls on the soil are disobedient. And because the souls are disobedient, the soul is unproductive. And God says when, 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 the, when, when, when my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then I will forgive their sin and I will heal your land. You see, you can ignore God. You can disobey God. But there's always consequences. Our nation is in perils. Is it because the soul's on the soil? Beloved, listen to me. Because they did not keep the land Sabbath rest, God arranged for the land to rest while they were in Babylon. While lying in a hospital bed, because remember now, I told you I was working 70, 80 hour work weeks. You know, when you're young, you're dumb. And, 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 and you know, I was, I was born poor and I said, I ain't gonna die poor. 
And so I, 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 was, I was one of these guys that, that just didn't know how to quit. Working like a fool. Sun up to sun down. Just, just, trying to, just trying to get ahead. Trying to get ahead. You know, always trying to push in the limits. We flew out to my family. We were on vacation. We flew to California. I got to California, and I noticed I, I was having some difficulty breathing. I noticed I was struggling, I, 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 and I just, it got progressively worse. And one night we had, we had drove, I had just drove from, uh, uh, from San, San Francisco to Anaheim, and, and I couldn't, I was struggling to walk from the car to the hotel. Like long story short, I ended up in the emergency room that night. There was a Spanish doctor, he kept walking. Every time he walked out of the room, he, was, he would turn, he would look at me, and he would say, I wish you luck, my friend. I wish you luck. I'm like, what is he talking about? My wife said, doctor, tell him, tell him, tell him what's wrong, and tell him what's going on with him. And they had not planned. They, they had told my wife that he would not live through the night. He had eight blood, I had eight blood clots in my lung. People die with one. I had eight. Because I had violated rest. We used to sing a song in the church I grew up in. We would sing a song, keep too busy for Jesus. Too busy for Jesus, don't have time to die. That's a lie. You can wear your body out. You can wear your body out. And, and this verse, these verses became very, in that, in that hospital room, God spoke these verses anew and afresh in my spirit. Psalms, the 23rd Psalm, verses 2 and 3. God said, he maketh me to lie down. Listen to me. If you don't have enough sense to lie down, he'll make you lie down. He maketh thee to lie down in green pasture. That may be a hospital bed. <laughs> he said, he leadeth me beside the still water. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. I'm a preacher. I'm a pastor. I'm laying in this bed in, in Anaheim, California. And God says, you violated the Sabbath rest in your body. You've wore your body out. Chasing success. Chasing the American dream. Chasing that dollar. Didn't know how to rest. Didn't know how to rest. Listen to me. He says that God knows how to shut us down. Just touch our bodies, just like God knows how to shut individuals down, he knows how to shut nations down. He knows how to shut down the world. Could it be, could it be that God used COVID-19 in 2020 to shut down our nation and the world? In 2020, 2020 was a time of rest and death. Many died from COVID-19. In addition, there were many who died because they could not rest, didn't know how to rest, and others who wouldn't rest. During the shutdown, there was a spike in oppression, suicide, mental illness, and drug abuse because people don't know how to rest. Now they're forced to rest because God has shut down the name. Because we would never, we would never have volunteered. We, we would never have volunteered to say, hey, hey, we're going to take 2020 off and, and let everything rest. Just, just go home and rest. <laughs> we are a people, we are driven by prosperity. We are driven by that dollar. God said, I'm not going to ask you. I'm going to shut it down for you. Yeah. People began to rediscover their kids. 
rediscover their, their spouse. Because now he's home too much. <laughs> Rest. Listen to me. I'm closing. God modeled it. He commanded it. He demanded it. Jesus provided it. Jesus provided the ultimate Sabbath rest on the cross through the empty tomb. God wants man, every man born, every man, woman, boy, and girl, he wants us to enter his rest. The book of Hebrews says that the Israelites disobeyed, disobedient was not economic, economically driven, but unbelief. Is that not true for us as well today? Hebrews chapter 3 verse 19 says, so we see that they were not able to enter because of their unbelief. Three times in, in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 3 and 4, God says, today, if you hear my voice, hearten not your heart, as they did in their rebellion during the time of testing in the, in the desert, three times, Hebrews chapter 3 verse 4, God says, so I declared an oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. And so rest, there's a different kind of rest. How many of you know that you can lay down but can't go to sleep? How many know you can close your eyes, but you, and, and you, you, can, even, you can even go to sleep and wake up tired because you're not getting rest? One of the most biggest problems that Americans have is insomnia. They're unable to sleep and get into that deep rim of rest because you're asleep, but something turning inside. It won't shut off. It won't shut off. You, you, you've hit the off button, but it's still running. And so you lay down tired, you wake up tired, you get up tired, and your body never rests. Listen to me. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1 says, Therefore, since the promise of entering to his rest, <laughs> his rest, you got to rest in him. It's a different kind of rest. Rest in, he says, his rest still stands. Let us be careful not that none of you be found to have fallen short of it, for we also have uh, had the, the good news proclaimed to us just as they did, but the message they heard was of no value to them because they did not share the faith of those who obeyed. Now we who have believed enter that rest just as God has said, so I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. You see, the lost man, the lost woman, the lost boy or girl, they can go to sleep, but they need sleep help. Sleep help mix. They got pills. They got to take pills. They take pills to lay down. They take pills to get up. They take, you see, that's not rest. God says, they'll never enter my rest. He says, and yet his work has been finished since the creation of the world for some. For somewhere, he has spoken about the seventh day in, this word, in these words. And on the seventh day, God rests from all his work. And again, in the passage above, he says, They share, shall never enter my rest. I don't care who couch you sit on. I don't care who couch you lay on. I don't care what they tell you until you enter his rest. There's no rest for the weary soul. Verse 6 says, therefore, since it still remains for some to enter that rest, and since those who formerly had the good news proclaimed to them did not go in because of their disbelief, the disobedient, God again said, a certain day called it today. <laughs> today. That's today. This he did when a 
Long time later, he spoke through David, as in the passage already quoted today, if you hear my voice, do not hearten your heart. For as in Joshua, he gave them rest. If Joshua, if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about another day. There remains then a Sabbath rest. For the people of God, for anyone who enters God's rest, also, watch, watch the text, rest from their work. What does he mean? You see, we try to do things on our own. See, I believe that if it's to be, it must be me. I must, whatever I do, it must be accomplished with these hands. God said, if you trust me, if you look to me, if you obey me, you can't go where I'm taking, I, I, your hands can't take you where I'm leading you. We try human effort to accomplish things. And God says, if you, do have, if you learn how to rest in me, if you learn how to trust me, you don't have to work so much. You don't have to labor so much if you rest in my work. Notice what he says. He says, verse 11, let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following the example of disobedience. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It pierces, it penetrates even the dividing of the soul and the spirit, the joints, the marrow. It judges the thoughts, the attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Beloved, God is saying to you and I this morning, I want you to rest in me. On this Labor Day weekend, I want you to trust me. Trust me to provide for you. Trust me to meet your needs. Trust me to lead you and guide you. God wants every one of us to enter his rest by receiving his finished work on the cross of Jesus Christ, on the cross of Calvary. Listen to me. You cannot earn salvation, you simply receive salvation. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace are you saved, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone, anyone should boast. God's will, will you receive today God's that eternal gift of eternal life in Jesus Christ. Beloved, this morning, you've heard God's voice. It's now time to oh, obey God's voice, to respond to God's voice. This Labor Day weekend, this Labor Day weekend, I want to encourage you to get some rest, some true rest, some real rest. But that only comes in the Lord. We can only rest in the Lord. Listen to me. You can lay down. You can close your eyes. You can put on the music. My wife likes to put on the waterfalls. You be in water, you know, and it's like, you know, and I, that doesn't put me to sleep. <laughs> Listen to me. We have tried all our lives. Find rest to find peace, and God says, it's in Jesus. It's in Jesus. I simply want to encourage you this weekend, get some rest, some real rest, some true rest. But that rest only comes from being right with God. You can only rest when you're at peace with him. Oh, anything else is pseudo. Oh, anything else you may need help with. But today, this morning, he said, the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart, for now is the acceptable time of salvation. What a great day. What a great weekend to find rest on Labor Day weekend.
rest in him. Would you stand with me as we go to the Lord this morning? I want to pray, and then I want to challenge you, and I want to open up the altar to say, Lord, today, I want to enter in to your rest. The nation of Israel, as a nation who had the word of God, who had men of God, did not enter into his rest because of their unbelief, because of their disbelief. Listen to me. Here's what I know. I know this very morning there's someone here today struggling with rest, struggling with sleep. You can close your eyes, but you can't go to sleep. Because there's something inside. There's something troubling you. There's something, listen to me, the best medicine you can't get from Eckert or, the, or uh, CVS. The best medicine for your body you can't get from a pharmacy. The best medicine for your body is rest. Rest. Rest is a natural medicine for your body. But if you can't rest, you can't get healthy. The challenge this morning is to enter into his rest. As the praise team, as they sing this morning, I want to challenge you. If you step out of that pew, if you step out, he will step in and new life will begin. God today, God wants someone today who's willing to enter into his rest. Someone who would say, I haven't been able to rest, and I need rest. My body is tired, I'm weary. God, I'm coming this morning to enter into your rest. That may mean that you need to forget about your neighbor now. This ain't about your neighbor. It's not about your neighbor. It's not about a person. This is for you. You got to do this for you. You're the one up. You're the one got that's popping the pills. You're the one that God is saying to you today, this is for you. This is your day. You've heard my voice. Now obey my voice and respond to my voice. Will you come? As we sing, you come. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Father, that you would give your people the boldness to answer the call in their heart and in their life, to come and to trust you, to meet every need, solve every problem. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To your majesty and your beauty I surrender. You can come this morning. The altar is open. God, I need to enter in. I need your rest today. You come. Will you obey? You've heard his voice. If he's speaking to you today, you come. So that you may enter in to his rest. Who is mighty? You deserve my Boldness. I 
Just say, excuse me. I need to go do business with the master. I'm coming. With all of my heart, with all of my life, I surrender. Father, we have heard your word. We have obeyed your word this morning. Father, thank you this morning for those who've come. And Father, we ask that you would meet them, meet every need in their heart, every need in their lives, Lord God. That, Father, Lord, that you would just show yourself mighty in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, as we prepare to leave this place, but never your presence, we ask that you go with us, stand by us, lead us and guide us. We ask all these things. In Christ's precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Go in peace today.